Hello everyone, I welcome you all in today's session about Power BI interview questions. In today's session, let's look out at the top 25 Power BI interview questions that can help you crack your interview. But before we go ahead, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the EduRekas YouTube channel to never miss out on any updates from us. Also, if you're looking for the Power BI certification training course, do check out the link given in the description below. So guys, let's look at our agenda for today. So firstly, we'll take a look at some generic Power BI interview questions, which are the essentials of the Power BI. Next, we'll look at the DAX interview questions from Power BI. Moving ahead, we'll talk about the Power Pivot interview questions and at last, we'll cover the Power Query interview questions. So guys, without any ado, let's move ahead to the generic Power BI interview questions. So the first question is, what is Power BI? So guys, Power BI is nothing but a cloud-based data sharing environment. Once you have developed reports using Power Query, Power Pivot, and Power Views, you can share your insights with your colleagues. This is where the Power BI enters the equation. Power BI is technically an aspect of SharePoint Online that lets you load Excel workbooks into the cloud and share them with a chosen group of co-workers. The next question is, how would you define Power BI as an effective solution? So guys, Power BI is a business intelligence tool as mentioned, which is used to analyze and visualize raw data that can be fetched from a wide range of data sources. It is used to consolidate business analytics with data visualization and helps any organization to make business decisions based on data. Power BI is easy to work with and the data is processed in such a manner that it is easy to understand and also reliable. Power BI can be accessed from different platforms and can also be shared across on-cloud participants. This makes it an effective solution for Power BI. Moving on to the next question, we talk about what is a slicer in Power BI. So guys, a slicer is a visual element in Power BI that allows you to filter data within your reports and dashboards. It provides an interactive way to select specific values from a field or column and apply filtering to all visuals in real time. Slices enhance data exploration and analysis by allowing users to focus on specific subsets of data. So that's what a slicer means. Next, let's talk about defining bidirectional cross filtering. So guys, Power BI's bidirectional cross-filtering is a feature that allows all users to apply filters on the either sides of the table relationship. So you have tables and along with that report creators and data modelers, which can give you more control over applying any sort of filters over your data. Moving on, next is list out the various refresh options available in Power BI. So first in the list, we have the scheduled refresh that automatically updates your data on a set schedule. Next, we have on-demand refresh, which is used to manually trigger a data update anytime, followed by direct query that connects directly to the data source for real-time updates, followed by gateway connection that handles data refresh option for on-premises sources. Next, we have the live connection, which are nothing but direct links to analysis services for your live data. Moving on to the next question, what are some of the familiar sources for data in the Get Data menu in Power BI? So first we have the file that allows you to import data from files that are stored on your local machine or over the network. Next we have the databases, which provides you with the options to connect to various databases such as Microsoft SQL Server, Azure SQL Database Server, and many more. Next we have Azure that allows you to connect to the data sources in Microsoft Azure. Lastly, we have the online services that includes connectors for popular online services like SharePoint Online, Dynamics 365, Web APIs, etc. The next question is, what do you mean by grouping? So guys, grouping refers to the process of combining your data into logical categories based on specific criteria. By grouping your data, you can organize and summarize large data sets making it easier to understand and analyze the information. Next, let's talk about the responsive slicers in Power BI. So guys, responsive slicers in Power BI refer to the feature that allows slicers to automatically adjust their layout and appearance based on the available space in the report or dashboard. Slicers are nothing but visual controls that provide an interactive way for users to filter data in a report. They allow users to choose specific values from a field 
and filter the data displayed in other visuals accordingly. Moving ahead, we have what is M language. So guys, M language is a scripting language which is used in Power Query, also a data transformation and data preparation tool that is a part of Microsoft Power BI, Excel, and other Microsoft products. The M language is specifically designed for data connectivity, data transformation, and data mashup. The next question we have list out the most common technique for data shaping. So in this, the first we have is the filtering, which is used to remove the unwanted rows or columns from the data set based on a specific criteria. Secondly, we have sorting, which is nothing but arranging your data in a specified order based on one or more columns. Third on the list, we have grouping and aggregation. So guys, the whole point of grouping and aggregation is to group your data based on one or more attributes and then calculating the summary statistic for each group as a part of aggregation. Then we have the joining and merging that combines data from multiple tables or data sources based on common columns to create a unified data set. Moving on to the next question we have, how is the schedule refresh feature designed to work? So the schedule refresh feature in Power BI is designed to automatically update data in a published report or data set on a regular basis. When you create a report or data set in Power BI and publish it to the Power BI service, you may want the data to stay up to date without having it to manually refresh it each time. So last on this list, we have what is self-service business intelligence. So guys, self-service business intelligence, also known as SSPI, is an approach to data analysis that enables business users to filter, segment, and analyze their data without their in-depth technical knowledge in statistical analysis or business intelligence. So SSPI has made it easier for end users to access their data and create various visuals to get better business insights. Moreover, anybody who has a basic understanding of the data can create these reports to build an intuitive or shareable dashboards. So guys, next in the list, we have the DAX, which is nothing but data analysis expression in Power BI interview questions. So let's move on to the first question of DAX. So guys, to do any basic calculation and data analysis on data in Power Pivot, we use data analytics expression, which is DAX. It is the formula language that is used to compute calculated column and calculated field. Here you need to know that DX works on column values. Also, DX cannot modify or insert the data. We can create calculated columns and measures with DX, but we cannot calculate the rows using DX. The next question is, what are the most common DX functions used? So here are some of the most commonly used DX functions. The first on this segment, we have the basic function formulas, which are sum, min, max, average, and count rows. Next, we have the conditional functions, which are if, and, or, and switch. Then we have the values, all, filter, and calculate, followed by summarize columns and is empty column, followed by the inbuilt methods, which are summarize columns and is empty. Lastly, we have the measures of central tendencies that are geo mean median, and date diff, which is the date difference. You can use the date diff function to determine how many specified time interval exists between two dates. So guys, let's move on to the next question we have. What are the fundamental concepts of DX? So firstly, we have syntax, which are formulas which includes the functions. Also, if it's incorrect, it will return an error. Second, we have the functions, which are arguments with specific orders to perform. It helps in calculating any particular order which is required in the arguments. Third, we have the context. So contexts are of two types, row context and filter context. Row context is used when a formula has a function that applies a filter to identify a row in a table. Also, we have the filter context, which are used when one or more filters are used to get a value. The next question is, how is the filter function used? So guys, the filter function returns a table with a filter condition applied for each of its source table rows. This function is rarely used in isolation. It's generally used as a parameter to other functions such as calculate. Filter is an iterator and thus can negatively impact performance over large source tables. Next, what is the calculate function in DX? As we have seen this function in the earlier, 
the calculate function measures the sum of a column from any table and can be modified with filters. You can also take a look at the syntax body, which is calculate followed by the expression under the argument and filter. So here, the expression which has the significance to be evaluated and the filter is nothing but true or false expression or a table expression that defines a filter. After this, let's move on to the Power Pivot interview question. So starting with the basic, what is Power Pivot data model? So guys, Power Pivot is a model that is made up of data types, tables, columns, and table relation. These data tables are typically constructed for holding data for a business entity. So next question is, list out differences in data modeling between the Power BI desktop and the Power Pivot for Excel. So let's take a look at the aspects from which we can take out the comparison. So first in terms of integration with tools, where Power BI is integrated with Power BI ecosystem, Power Pivot for Excel is integrated with the Excel environment. Next, based on the data source connectivity, Power BI desktop offers a broad range of connections for various data sources, whereas Power Pivot connects to various data sources within Excel. Next, in terms of modeling interface, Power BI Desktop uses Power Query for data transformation, whereas the Power Pivot for Excel uses Power Query, Pivot Tables, and Pivot Charts. Then in terms of the data relationships, Power BI Desktop defines relationship visually in the data view, whereas Power Pivot creates relationship in the diagram view. Lastly, in terms of the DX language, Power BI Desktop utilizes DX for creating measures and calculated columns whereas Power Pivot for Excel uses DX language for calculation. So here's the comparison between the Power Pivot and the Power BI. So the next question we have is, can we have more than one active relationship between the two tables in data model of Power Pivot? So the answer is, we can have more than one relationship between the two tables, but there will be only one active relationship and many inactive relationships. Lastly, let's get some insight about Power Query interview question. So firstly, what is Power Query? So Power Query is an ETL tool, which means extract, transform, and load. That is the data integration process. This tool is used to shape, clean, and transform the data using intuitive interfaces without having to use coding. It helps the user to import data from a wide range of sources from files, databases, big data, social media data, etc. So some examples listed are join and append, which are used from multiple data sources. Also, we have the shape data as per requirement for removing and adding the data. Next, let's talk about what is query folding in Power Query. So query folding is when steps defined in Power Query or editor are translated into SQL and executed by the source databases rather than the client machine. It's important for the processing performance and scalability given limited resources on the client machine. Then the next question, can SQL and Power Query or editor can be used together? So the answer is yes, an SQL statement can be defined as the source of Power Query and M functions for additional processing or logic. This would indeed be a good practice to ensure that an efficient database query is passed to the source and also it avoids unnecessary processing and complexity by the client machine and M function. Moving on, we have why do we need the Power Query when Power Pivot can import data from mostly used sources? So for this question, guys, you should know that the Power Query is a self-service ETL, which is extract, transform, and load tool that runs as an Excel add-in. It allows the user to pull data from various sources, also manipulate data into a form that suits their needs, and loads it into Excel. This service is the most optimum to use Power Query over Power Pivot as it lets you not only load the data but also manipulate it as per the user's need while loading. Moving on to the last segment of the list, we have named some of the commonly used tasks in Query Editor. So, guys, the first task would be to get the data from various sources and then transform the data. The next task is shape data. You should transform your data according to requirement to clean and shaping it. Third, we have grouping rows. You can group the values of many rows into one single value by summarizing it. Then we have the pivot columns. So guys, your next task is to pivot columns and create a table with aggregated values. 
the last task would be to create custom tables. So for this, you can use the custom formulas to create new columns in your table. So guys, that's pretty much about the Power BI interview questions. I hope you liked this video and if you did, press the like button and stay subscribed for our further upcoming videos. Thank you and like always, wish you happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!